So in, to what we're going to talk about today is a, is a quantitative approach, and a quantitative approach just means a mathematical approach to, um, to investing. And the reasons why I gravitated toward this is really the removal of, the, of human emotion, Next, quantifying risk, or in my, in my view, quantifying risk means being able to manage or being in control of the drawdown of the portfolio. And then the implementation of risk management, meaning how much are you willing to risk or how much, how much are you willing to own in more aggressive um, or risky type of assets. These are all things that you know, Fari deals with every day when he's managing his portfolio, you know, managing futures. Uh, but they certainly do apply down to uh, you know the portfolio level for the individual investor as well, even something more conservative. We want the quantitative approach also assists in security selection, and we'll talk about uh, that in some of our studies here that we'll cover shortly. And then increases the statistical likelihood of repeatable outcomes by using a defined process. Most, uh, you know, I, I certainly am always curious to see what people are using for these quantitative tools as they manage portfolios. And, and the two that I run across the most commonly is relative strength, determining what to own within the portfolio. If, if, that's, uh, if relative strength isn't something you're familiar with, it's basically comparing the investment, that you, uh, a, li a list of investments to something else. They typically compare the performance of, uh, let's say, uh, foreign investments to the S&P 500 or financial stocks to the S&P 500. And they want to rank these, inv these investments to determine which ones are actually outperforming the broad market, helps to identify those outperformers early on and get in, find those trends that are uh, taking, taking hold. And, and, then, and then, of course, with the idea of, of giving yourself additional returns. And the other portion I wanted to bring up is that typically when people talk about relative strength, they, they never really cover or they don't usually generally bring it up, but is, it is important to be aware of the relative strength over what time period. I, as I bump across, as I bump into different pieces of, uh, of uh, ideas on this, I just you know, if you dig a little deeper, you'll say, well, what are you, you're comparing the relative strength, is it over one day, is it over five days, a month, a week, you know, what is it? Um, and as they, as they define, this is, this is the optimal period to, to, to look at relative strength. So just be aware of that. Um, the next one is moving averages. I, again, I, uh, I typically see people that are taking advantage or trying to do some tactical investing. They're, they're using moving averages to provide buy and sell signals. I see very, very commonly run across simple and exponential. Of course, uh, there are also, there's also a weighted moving average, but I run across these two the most. And of course, the moving averages, as you know, are calculated over a specific time period. Now, those are, those are the typical things. We're not going to talk about that today. We're going to talk about something different, and I'm going to show you something that's kind of that's unique that I haven't run across anywhere else that I think you'll enjoy.